188 years ago, a handful of brave, dedicated American colonists made the awesome decision to revolt against the most powerful nation in history. Here were people living in prosperity and peace, secured from foreign invasion by the great British Army and Navy, enjoying an enlightened judicial system and living with more freedom than nine-tenths of the world. Yet they chose to risk all this, risk their personal wealth, their security, even their lives to get more freedom. Most of the world wrote them off as brave but brainless fools. Well, they fought their foolish battle. They fought it under flags bearing the brave slogan, Don't Tread on Me. They fought it with homemade rifles against fine artillery. They fought it in the snow, their feet wrapped in rags. They fought it from behind trees against the world's best trained troops. They suffered unimaginable hardships. And incredibly, they won. Then their leaders sat down to write the greatest governmental plan the world has ever seen, the United States Constitution. Historians have tried to explain how such an enlightened assemblage of different backgrounds and interests with practically no experience in government could gather in a remote corner of the globe and reach agreement on a constitution that successfully guided a nation to greatness for 150 years. They can find no explanation except that it was the will of God. The republic they founded grew under this constitution to become the freest, richest, strongest, most moral, most generous, most respected nation in all history. This was the great heritage they passed on to us today. But then an infection set in. The heritage began to shrivel and die. Freedoms began to disappear. The government grew large and began to interfere in private lives and businesses, telling us what insurance to buy, what charities to support, regulating who should be hired and how much they should be paid, even regulating what prices should be charged and to whom we should sell. Our great wealth disappeared. Today we owe foreign creditors billions in gold we don't have. In a time of peace and good business, we go even further into debt, immorally charging to our grandchildren the debts for the high living of our government, deliberately hiding our bankruptcy by an inflation that robs the aged and widows and orphans. Our strength disappeared. We allowed construction of the Berlin Wall with hardly a protest. We allowed establishment of a communist base 90 miles from our shores for the subversion of South America and we actually protect it from invasion by Cuban exiles. In the face of an enemy sworn to bury us, we stopped atmospheric nuclear testing and cut back missile and bomber programs. Our foreign policy has been described as a catastrophe, not a program. Respect for us in the eyes of the world has disappeared. Our flag has been torn down and desecrated by mobs and upstart dictatorships. Our citizens have been slapped, insulted, imprisoned, and ordered out of countries American taxpayers support. For the last two years, American embassies, consulates, or agencies are attacked, vandalized, or bombed at the rate of one every month somewhere in the world. Morality has declined to the point that personal protégés of the president use their positions to steal millions from the public. Even our postal system is used for distribution of pornography and communist propaganda. Law enforcement has become a disgrace. Years after communists were ordered to register, the attorney general has still not gotten around to enforcing the law. Crime rates are skyrocketing. In our streets are rioters and looters, often encouraged by high government officials, and sometimes they are communist-led. Our generosity has been perverted. We sell our wheat at a loss to bail our enemies out of the consequences of their totalitarian socialism. Taxpayers' money is used to underwrite the communist governments of Yugoslavia, Poland, and Bulgaria. We even train enemy fighter pilots and give them jet airplanes. Our Constitution is practically abandoned. It's clear wording and intent twisted and deliberately misinterpreted, sneered at by so-called liberals as being antiquated, out of touch with the times. But you know the record. You know what is happening to personal freedom and to our country at home and abroad. And you know that we must change our course if we are to survive and pass on to our children the great heritage that was given us. Barry Goldwater offers us the choice for a change. He offers us a return to the Constitution that made our country great. He offers us fiscal responsibility, not passing our debts on to our grandchildren. He offers us a strong foreign policy that is our best guarantee of peace and dignity. He offers us a return to morality and law enforcement. On November 3rd, you will make your choice. Shall we continue down this road to bankruptcy, totalitarianism, and war, or shall we return to our traditional American ideals with Barry Goldwater?